Okay, give these guys a death penalty just for that dog kick alone. So, House of the Dragon Season 2 premiered. Blood and cheese. And basically, the big guy, his name is Blood. The small guy kind of looks like a rat. His name is Cheese. And this episode is honestly one of the brutalest episodes um, in, in Game of Thrones. Like, I would say it's up there at the Red Wedding. I think the episode is actually called The Sun for a Sun. I don't think it's called Blood and Cheese. But these two guys are the main guys this episode that everybody's talking about but before we get into them and the brutality of that let's get into the episode so you know we start off the episode with basically Rhaenyra's son the one that has been eaten by a dragon is meeting with this dude who sounds basically like a dude who's trying to do a Jon Snow impression I mean it kind of makes sense he's Jon Snow's great 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 grandfather or something like that and you know he's showing him on the wall and he's like sorry like the stars kind of agree with you but we really can't go fight uh, cause we gotta protect the wall from these things, you know, the deaf and all that. He doesn't really specify what, but we know he's talking about the others, you know, really hyping them up again. You know, unfortunately we know how that ends, but it's, it's interesting. And he says that the dragons won't even cross the wall. Like they've shown Targaryens the wall, not even dragons will cross the wall, which is kind of interesting because Daenerys' dragons, you know, they had no problem, but a little bit different here. But he does offer... Rhaenyra sides like a bunch of old dudes like 2,000 old dudes that are like 40 plus so he succeeds in that and then we skip to basically a small council of Aegon and Otto and um you know Kristen Cole he shows up a little bit late you know Otto's kind of looking like hmm why are you walk in here a little bit late Kristen Cole and it's because Kristen Cole's been taking out his other sword with Allison. Which is a little bit different, because I, I don't think that's in the books or anything like that. So basically, Kristen Cole, you know, again, banging another queen or princess or, you know, queen regent in this case. It's pretty crazy. I mean, <laughs> uh, you know, Cole has got to be one of the most messed up, hypocritical characters, maybe in the entire of Game of Thrones. Like, he's he's insane. And Allison now, you know, she's she's getting her freak on. She's basically, you know, become Rhaenyra now in that way. And, you know, Otto, I think he kind of knows what's going on. You know, he's, he's, he's been noticing. But, you know, he's doing this small council. We got Aegon here. And we get to see Aegon's son, who, you know, plays a big role later in the episode. We got the Lannister guy. And, you know, I was very surprised. The actor that plays Aegon does a really good job at making him, like, a relatable douchebag. Like, I thought he was going to be like Joffrey, where just, like, he's universally hated or hates him. He does a really good job at, like being somewhat sympathetic this episode despite being a horrible guy like he actually shows love for his son as stuff that like we didn't think he was even capable of you know and it, it's it even shows anger you know when something unfortunately happens to his son later in the episode spoilers and it's just um very interesting i you know I, i'm very impressed with um you know the Aegon character he's exceeded my expectations so far so you know they're going over the small council uh, Otto saying he sent ravens to everybody, the Starks, no reply, you know, he's like, oh, you know, cunts, and, um, I don't know why I made him Australian there, but basically, you know, no surprise that the Starks said no, because they're, they've already sided with Rhaenyra, so the Starks are for Team Rhaenyra, they're on the, on the black, so, you know, they have this whole meeting here, doesn't really go anywhere, Aemon walks in at the end, apparently Allison's mad at him, doesn't want him on the small council, because she blames him for starting the war, and there's that scene. So then, um, so what else will we cover? So yeah, Blood and Cheese, they're very different in the, then I would say there's some differences. So apparently in the books, again, I haven't read the entire book, Blood and Cheese are, you know, different looking. And Helena, um, however you say the name of Aegon's sister wife, she has three kids. And they're all babies in the show, but like here, they're like some of the kids are actually older in the book. So that was like one thing that was like way different that I saw. Here's some, you know, book depictions here, um, which I thought that was very different. Well, it is different. But um, so Blood and Cheese are basically hired by Damon to get revenge for Rhaenyra's son. That's why, you know, it's called Son for a Son. And, um,. <clears throat> They they essentially originally were supposed to kill Amon, which is like good luck with that. The dude's a master swordsman, like better than Kristen Cole. 
and he's got like the biggest dragon in the realm so like good luck with that so i really knew like that ain't gonna happen you don't even need to read the book no they had no chance there but they basically disguise themselves as rat catchers and like try to sneak in to the red keep and um basically man there's this scene i had the picture somewhere but it was basically like Aegon is just like laid out on the throne with his boys when they they sneak into the uh, in the castle and he's like all drunk you see like the the maester guy he's drunk too and you just never see a bit like it's crazy to see the king just like it doesn't even seem like they're drunk it seems like they're high and they're just like laid out in the throne room like yeah man like Aegon you're the king like you can do whatever you want man and Aegon's like yeah but you know my grandpa he's he's a douchebag man trying to make me do what he wants you know like screw my grandpa man and my mom man you know and he's all pissed and then these two guys they just like walk right through the throne room while Aegon is drunk and there's like six Kingsguard guy there and they don't even question them because apparently like we saw in the previous season the castle has all these issues with rats so they just don't care they don't even like think like oh yeah these guys are kind of sus they just let them walk right by the throne room right past the king and the king's guards but apparently cole was on duty who's the commander of the king's guard and he was supposed to protect the kids protect Aegon's kids protect his uh, sister wife that doesn't work you know uh because kirsten cole He's uh, getting it on with uh, the Queen Regent, the Queen Mother again over here. While, you know, the Blanchies are killing the heir to the throne, which is pretty crazy. You know, he was supposed to get his other sword out, but instead he chose, you know, his uh, his primary sword. He was using it on uh, Allison and, uh, you know, getting to business. And well, well, really, she was getting to business. Really can't show too much of what was going on, on YouTube, but she was on top of him. And, uh, you know, Helena, uh, you know, she's get, you know, running with one of her kids, one that doesn't get chopped. So essentially, you know, the, di the difference here, she only has two kids as opposed to a book. She had like three or the other kids is not here for whatever reason in the show version. And, you know, Blood and She sneak in and, uh, you know, they're like, which one's the boy? And she points to one of them is well she points to the boy but they're like oh no she's lying that's the girl but then it turns out she's is like no she uh she's pointing to the boy and then they chop up the boy which i could play that but i'm not it's too brutal honestly it's it's horrible you just hear like the crunching sounds of the bones and everything it's really disgusting it's really disturbing uh, one of the most you know horrible things so i can only imagine if they did the book version i kind of don't blame hbo for making this less brutal than the book version the book version apparently allison was there um they had some guards but they were killed like it's a little bit different In this version allison's busy you know getting on with cole and there was no guards they kind of just like sneak in because cole, cole was supposed to be guarding the place and uh they kill the prince the prince to be the heir to the throne so now Aegon, you know it's a son for a son Rhaenyra lost her son Aegon lost his son now the war is on and it's going to be really really crazy next episode i can only imagine you know how brutal this is going to get i mean i already saw in the trailer some of the battle scenes they're really really crazy i mean the battle scenes it's 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 going to be wild wild stuff also you know we i don't think otto is going to be around very much longer because we got that rat guy that loris guy who's like you know, doing some pulling some little finger shit, whispering in Aegon's ear, like, "Hey, you know, your grandpa, he's trying to control you, like, uh, like, like he controlled your father." Which is why when we see Aegon like lay down the th on the throne with his bros, they're all like trashing Otto. So I think Otto, he might be on his way out, retirement, maybe permanent retirement. We don't know. Um, but yeah, next episode looks very, very promising. I thought it was a pretty good premiere. If if you wanna, you know. Honestly, like, if you haven't watched it, watch it. If you haven't seen season one, of course, go watch season one and then, you know, watch this. This is House of Dragon. It's it's really good. It's Again, you know, because we're using book material. We're not relying on, like, D&D &D, pulling shit out of their ass. Like, we're using book material here. So it's going to be really good. It's going to continue to be really good. And, you know, hopefully, you know, one day George R. R. Martin finishes the books and maybe we can retcon some of the stuff in the original. Who the hell knows? Fingers crossed on that. I don't know. If not, maybe we can get AI to do it. Because even AI would be better than what D&D did. But anyways, 
wherever you are, don't forget to like, don't forget to subscribe. It's greatly appreciated. And peace out.